Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel guys. If you have the 1.8 engine guys that's been used on Chevy Cruze, Chevy Sonic, four different Opel models guys, check it out in the description of the video below. As well guys, uh, Alfa Romeo 159 and Fiat Chrome and you're trying to replace camshafts guys, okay, intake and exhaust camshafts, stay with us and we'll show you guys how to do that. We'll have more than 200 videos on every vehicle we get at the shop because our goal guys is to save you as much money as we can. Please subscribe to the channel and let's go ahead and start on it and see how much we have to do, okay, to remove guys and replace these camshafts. You can see it takes quite a bit of, quite a bit of work to get to that point, to take everything apart, that's what the engine is going to look like and you'll see guys what needs to be done. We'll be demonstrating on Chevy Cruze but as I said the same engine, exactly the same engine has been used on Chevy Cruze, Chevy Sonic, Opel Astra, Opel Insignia, Opel Mocha and uh, I believe one more uh, and also Alfa Romeo 159 and Fiat Chroma. So let's go ahead guys, start on it and get to that point. So you can see guys our intake is missing, we removed it for another video, you do not have to remove the intake for that at all guys. Uh, we'll just have a little bit more room to work with and show you better where things are that way and you can see on the engine yourself. One thing that we'll need to remove that airbox, so stay with us, we'll remove the airbox and we'll continue with the next step. So guys what we need to do first, okay right here we need to disconnect if you have a hose for your secondary air pump, okay these two places you need to squish in, it's going to spread out on this side and we can pull it out, okay like that, okay check out how it spreads out, the teeth are right here, now we need a flathead screwdriver, we're going to uh, get that clamp loose now for the intake manifold, Okay, let me just install this one where it's supposed to be, so I'll show you how to remove it. Okay, just a little bit more. Okay, now we can pull that hose out. Okay, like that. Right here now, guys. Okay, I'm going to grab, okay, and pull it out. There is one tooth holding. And we need to disconnect the MAF sensor. Okay, on underneath you have one white thing that you need to pull this way, then push in. Okay, and pull it out. Okay, red thing, not white. So you can see when it's locked in place, okay, that thing is all the way in. So we need to push it out to be able to remove it. Now, okay, let's see what else is holding that box. I think it's just a couple rubber bushings. You grab it with your hands. Okay, let's see if we have anything on the back like that and you guys grab it okay and here we have one more hose that we need to disconnect okay one little hose and pull it out now where are the rubber bushings that i'm talking about okay looking at the box this is on the front side this is a rubber bushing this is on the back side those are the only things holding your air filter box guys in the car and from that point on it just goes in the fender like that so you can see it just came out like that so with the airbox out of the way now this is your engine mount guys right here we will show you what needs to be done to replace it we'll need to get a jack we'll need to get a wood block because we'll need to jack the engine underneath so we can support it and make sure it doesn't drop when we remove the mount so I have the jack underneath the vehicle with a wood block, okay you can see we're going to support the open and I'm going to pump it just a little bit because actually the engine has some weight on the mount so I'll just go a little bit up, uh, it's hard to tell exactly how much guys you have to kind of like feel it your way to know how much and now we'll start removing the bolts here that hold the mount to the engine motor. So now guys 15 millimeter socket, okay and okay, let me show you what we will be removing here okay so you can see perfect okay let's point it this way so you know where things are okay first of all okay this nut right here I'm going to get it loose then guys okay we're going to get loose these three bolts here okay a few more now okay 
Next, we have this bolt right here. Some of those are expected to I expected them to be a little bit tighter. Okay, what I'll do now, guys, I'm going to get uh, the little wind pipe. Okay, give me just a second and see if we can remove them. Okay, one is out now. It's extremely important, guys. Okay, I'm saying that. Again, when you remove the third bolt, your engine might drop. So if it starts dropping, remove it slowly. You will need to, guys, adjust the jack. Okay, and lift it up a little bit more. So far, good. Now it's the third one that's holding. Okay, in our case, we're good to go. I supported it enough, so it will not drop at all. Okay, that nut now. Right here. And next, two more bolts. One here, one over there. Perfect. Now, what I'll do, guys, I'll remove these two bolts. Okay, just like that. And now, we can grab the engine mount. Okay, check this thing out. And just pull the whole assembly out of the way. You can see just like that. So 50 millimeter socket now guys, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and remove that mount here, okay, we have one bolt, okay, right here, on top, and then we have, okay, two more bolts, only this one last, we have one towards the bottom here, Okay, this one is actually, the bottom one is going by hand, so I'm very surprised. That's a good thing. Okay, right there. Now we have one more towards the front. Oh, this one. He's going by hand as well. Okay, another bolt. And this is just the third one now on top. Okay, perfect. Let me see if I can pull that thing out now. Okay, you can see guys, just like that. It came out of the way now. So now guys, uh, we'll remove the wheel, okay, we need to remove the fender liner, you can see the car was in an accident on this side, okay, ignore that, it doesn't really matter if it's in an accident or not, okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove the wheel cover here and then we'll remove the tire quick. Okay, now we just need to remove the lug nuts quick guys. Okay, so I'm ready to take the thing off because we already removed them. We got them loose. So you can see guys, it takes a little bit of work to do that. Okay, now I'll leave the wheel under the vehicle here. And let's see now if we can actually, okay, reach the crankshaft, pull it from here. And we do can, and I'm going to show you what tool we need to use as well. Alright you guys, so uh, now the fender liner, okay, we have one clip here. 
Okay, let me show you how you're supposed to do it. Okay, you unscrew the middle part. Okay, and then you pull the whole thing out. One there. Okay, we have one on top. Another one on top. Then we have here. There. We have a few on the front. And then we'll have one. Okay, two. Three screws that we need to remove, but all that ours is broken, so I'll just go ahead and remove it and show you what we need to do next. So now guys, right here, if you look, okay, there is one, okay, I'm trying to fit in there, okay, this white bolt, okay, this is with a 12 point socket, 12 point 19 millimeter socket, okay, like this one here. So. If we go now guys, okay, let me show you. If I go and get the socket in, okay, you can do that from the bottom of the car, not just from the top. Okay, let's hold it like that so you can see what's happening. I mean, okay, I'm going to go now counterclockwise. It will release the pressure of the belt and I'm going to remove it from the alternator. So check this thing out now. Okay guys, and now I can release, pull the socket out, okay, and we can, okay, I thought I can remove the belt, but what do we need to do now, guys? Okay, I actually need to install the socket again, and I need to get it out of the, I need to move the pulley a little bit, the tensioner pulley, okay, so I can get it out. Okay, like that. And you can see the belt, guys. Okay, came out of there, just like that. So you can, you need to find, guys, the socket that's going to fit on your uh, crankshaft, crankshaft pulley bolt. In our case, it's reverse torx, okay? But it will not always be reverse torx. It could be just uh, like 18 millimeter socket. It could be an Allen wrench sometimes. So you never know, guys, okay? And this one fits really, really good. We're going to connect now, okay, I'm going to connect uh, the impact to the compressor. Okay, and let's see what's going to happen now and if it's going to take it off, guys. Okay, let's give it a try now. We're getting it loose. In just, guys, no time, that thing came out, you can see, with ease, guys. It's unbelievable how fast we were able to remove it. You can see that. So definitely guys, it's a product that I would recommend if you're working in the shop guys and you need a, a compressor that builds quite a bit of pressure. Okay. Quite a bit of pressure, check it out. And uh, you can carry it everywhere. I would definitely recommend this setup. So, as you can see guys, uh, we removed, okay, we removed the uh, exhaust manifold with the catalytic converter. This is because uh, we will actually make a video how to replace the oil pump as well when you have to remove it. But uh, just for a timing belt, okay, you don't have to remove the exhaust manifold and you don't have to remove the intake uh, manifold as well. All that stays on the car. Just to clarify that, to make sure that, hey, the guys skipped a few steps. No, you don't need to remove that. So let's continue now. Oh right, guys, so next we'll go, go ahead and remove the valve cover here. So those things are already loose. Uh, if you want to check it out how to uh, remove them right here, there is a few clips, okay, you can see these clips, you push them in with the screwdriver and you pull that thing up, you have one, two, three clips, and those here you just pry them sideways. Now we need to remove that cover here, okay, and now we'll need to guys uh, remove, okay, here we have two bolts for the ignition pack, uh, ignition coil pack, and right here this is a safety lock pin, you need to pull it back. Okay, pull, push down. Okay, and disconnect like that. Now, we need to get a Torx, guys. Okay, let me see. This one will be probably, uh, probably will be Torx 40. Yep, Torx 40 socket, guys. We'll remove two bolts. Okay, those are out. Now we grab that ignition coil pack. Okay, and we pull it out. Now, we're still working here on the valve cover, guys. 
we need to, to get reverse torques to uh, okay this is a 10 reverse torques socket this is 10 millimeter and we'll start removing bolts for the valve cover we we'll have the torque specs on the channel so make sure you check it out guys Yeah, almost lost my socket here. Okay, let's see if I have anything else holding here, guys. Once we remove the cover, I'm going to show you where exactly all the bolts are located. Okay, check it out now this way. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11 bolts guys, okay, that you need to get loose, and you can see the valve cover guys, okay, came out. So with being open like that, we need to bring the engine to TDC point, okay, you can see this mark right here guys, this mark is uh, uh, matching with that arrow here, so that's TDC on the crankshaft. On top, okay, you're going to have one dot here and one little dot here, those will be lining up. Now the two guys that we're using, that's the cam, uh, the timing tool, you need that one, okay, for that job. You place this one on the back side of the camshaft, there is a canal that it goes to. And those front ones now, okay, let me show you how to install them. Usually they're black, but we painted them yellow with red so you can see a little bit better. Because with black it's hard to show you all the details. Okay, you can see guys, just like that, they're matching the dots, that canal there. Okay, let me show you again right here, how it's going in the canals. Okay, perfect. So, now guys, we need to find uh, Torx, okay, Torx socket that is going to fit. Okay, let's see exactly which one it is, because it will be something big, guys. Okay, and this one is Torx 55, okay, and Torx 55 fits grey. Uh, we're going to go ahead and show you, okay, uh, on the intake or the exhaust, both of them are the same way, so we'll just show you on one of them what we're going to do, but first guys, we need to remove the timing belt. How we remove the belt, okay, before we remove the pulley. Uh, the belt guys, okay, right here you have a place where with an Allen wrench, okay, we're going to go on the tensioner, okay, like that. It goes all the way like that. We're going to go ahead, okay, pull the tensioner like that, and now we can slide the belt out. Okay, perfect. And let's grab the belt, pull it out. Okay, and on the bottom it comes out a little bit harder. Okay, it gets stuck there, and we can just put it on the side. Now we're going to remove the, uh, the, the gears here. So it's recommended guys uh, for the next step, uh, okay, if you remove uh, camshaft, uh, uh, the camshaft sprockets or if you're going to remove camshafts for some reason, uh, you always need to go about, uh, you need to set it about 60 degrees, okay, right here, that mark. That way guys, okay, uh, you're not going to uh, hit the pistons and the valve, so what I'll do, I'll go counterclockwise, okay, to about 60 degrees, okay, like that, to make sure that I'm not going to smash the pistons and the valves and later have more problems. So with the Torx 55 socket, guys, we're going to go ahead and remove, okay, that bolt. Okay, you can see this one started getting loose. And this one there as well. Now I'll get the little impact. Okay, this is just a cap here. 
with an oil seal it's very important guys okay uh, to clean all the oil mess that you make here and not to get it on the belt later now we need to get the big tools again guys there is another torx inside those are oil field oil field uh, cam gears camshaft gears so now let's see if it's the same too yep it definitely looks like the same too Okay, so you can see guys, it started coming loose, now let's get the other one. Perfect, you can even hold them, okay, right here with a wrench if you need to, to offset all the balance, but uh, so far we haven't had problems with locking it with this and the other one as well. But I heard some terrible stories for breaking a camshaft so you might even want to hold it with one big wrench here when you're taking them off and installing them later as well. Now we'll go ahead. Okay, remove the bolts. Perfect, we need to get our two here. Okay, now the camshaft gears, okay, they should come out, guys. So we shouldn't confuse which one is which, okay. This one is right there. It fits only one certain way because the canal is a little bit up. And this is uh, the second one. Okay, you can see how they differ, guys. They're quite different. So now, guys, we need a reverse torque stand. This is E10 socket, guys, right here. And I'm going to use the impact to cheat a little bit because it's been a long day. So a little bit of time. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove this cover now, guys, right here. Okay, this is uh, one that you don't need. Those guys have thread locker on them okay let me explain to you thread locker blue thread locker that's why they don't come out so easy so uh, we have one more to remove towards here okay and now check it out we should be able guys okay to maybe pull that cover out or we need to remove okay let me see if we'll need to remove the Pulley guys, okay, for the timing belt because it looks like it's the only thing holding now. So, right here, I will need to get okay, let me grab the tools quick. Okay, here are the tools, guys, if you want to see what I'll be using. Torx, okay, I believe it's Torx 50 for those. Okay, let me check. Okay, this is Torx 50. Okay, start looking bit so. Let me see if I can remove that one or I have to use the ratchet yet. I don't need to use the ratchet on this one. Okay, it came loose. Now I'm just going to lift it up with one hand and get the bolt out of there. And the tensioner pulley for the uh, for the timing belt will come out okay just like that guys now this cover you can see out of the way as well next guys we have we need a uh, reverse torque stand again that start looking bit socket reverse one we have two bolts that we need to remove here one here and one over there so let's go ahead and start on that I have already one of the uh, VVT solenoids removed but if you guys want to remove it, it has only one bolt, okay, that you remove. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the wiring harness. You can see that yellow whitish thing, it goes back. Okay, press down and pull the wire out, okay, to get it like that. You can, I believe, remove it with the solenoid on or with the solenoid off. One bolt out, 
second one perfect now working on the third here and this is the fourth bolt okay cheating a little bit here with that impact guys but it saves you so much time when taking things off okay so now let's see what else is holding here guys i'm going to get this wiring harness this way so i can show you it shouldn't be anything else okay this thing should come out guys okay i don't see any more bolts the only thing probably holding right now it's the silicone that is glued with okay and i'm going to show you where that thing is okay you can see that thing on the bottom all that is black silicone oil resistant silicone so we need to break that thing loose now so i'll get a big screwdriver okay guys and if i come right here okay check it out uh, let me explain to you where exactly that is okay here on that mount and i pry a little bit up okay check it out now it's gonna come loose guys eventually okay this camshaft seal is stuck to the cap up there on one of them it came out on this one I will need to help it a little bit because it is stuck that's for sure okay it came loose it was just the silicone holding there guys and now it's very important to clean all that old silicone when you put it together because otherwise you will not be able to see it i'll show you in just a second okay what materials we're using so you can uh, see guys where we get it from and all that stuff this is your camshaft seals guys okay this is one of them the other one is right there uh, this one okay it was a little bit stuck from the time being there so pretty much that's how they go guys okay i usually use scraper like that okay and what i do okay i clean all, all of that silicone really really gently because uh, you have to be careful with these scrapers because they're very strong okay and you can actually cause damage to the cylinder head okay so you can see just clean it really good then uh, what i usually do get a little bit of brake cleaner and after that okay we use the gasket maker this is the maximum torque okay for rigid torque and high vibration applications ideal for newer and domestic newer domestic and imported vehicles guys in sensor safe this one is great we've been using it on so many cars and we never ever developed oil leaks after we use that thing so next guys okay we're going to remove the caps for the uh, for the camshafts okay so with the same that uh, reverse torque stands socket guys right there that's what we'll be doing and uh, i'm going to remove this one first okay let's pull the two on the back we don't need that two anymore and we'll just go ahead and remove them one by one you can see that they're labeled two three four five six seven eight nine so you should install them exactly in the same way guys otherwise it will not work later you will ruin your head Okay, just working on the last one here. Okay, perfect guys. I'm going to go ahead, remove those. Okay, get them in order. Two, three, four, five. And uh, what we'll do, okay, I'm going to place them okay right here so they stay in order with all the bolts okay just like that now we're going to go ahead and do the same to the other camshaft so let's go up and we have six seven eight and nine guys that we need to remove now okay just two more
Okay, so let's collect those now. Six, seven, eight, and nine, guys. So let's place them down again next to those. We we'll put them on the front side so we know that they're for the front. Okay, all that is there. Now we'll go on top, guys. Okay, and we can grab the camshafts one by one. Okay, this is our exhaust. This is our intake camshaft. So I'll grab them. Okay, and put them like that so I remember, okay, which way they need to go. This is the intake, this is the exhaust. You need to organize everything, otherwise guys you have hard time remembering things later and you can get them confused. So these are guys the camshafts out of the vehicle, you can see just like that, exhaust, intake. Putting it together it's in reverse order, we took it apart. We'll have specific videos guys for the torque specs on the camshaft caps here, if you need help with that. Uh, torque specs for the sprockets, check it out on the channel. You have to put new bolts every time, guys, you put those things together. That's how it is supposed to be. So, new bolts there as well. And uh, if you need help with anything, check the channel, guys. We'll most likely have the video. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.